infinity limit, you will find that the answer is going to infinity because you will have terms like m over like whatever, m, m squared, m cube and so on. And all of those go to infinity, right, as m goes to infinity. No, but what I'm saying is this thing about a, a particle not thinking of particle by itself, of, of itself, but that it is constantly exchanging these photons and all. Right. Is that, that's the natural state of a particle? That's the natural state of anything. So, 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 so basically that uh, any elementary particle is naturally the state that it's emitting and absorbing, it's emitting and absorbing, uh, you know, other, other things and that's its natural state, uh, right? And, and because that's the natural state and, and when something else emits and absorbs nearby, there's a little difference of what it can get back from what it emitted and that's how it's feeling the cake. Right, and and that's how these things uh, these things are are happening, but but then you leave, you when you do calculations you leave, get problems of infinities. Now what people found, and this this problem has essentially got converted to an advantage in a in a sense. What you find is that if the theory, so now so now supposing you have an electromagnetic force, right? It is uh, let's say e squared by R squared, right? Is electromagnetic force. Now, you you don't know why this, why the why the gravity or electromagnetic force is going as one over R squared. We have no idea. It could well be R cubed or R raised to four, right? It's a question of measuring and finding. But now, if I say that unless these forces are of some form, these infinities don't get cancelled, then you have a theoretical reason why the forces are what they are observed without referring to experiments. So what, uh, let me complete. So what we find is that only some theories are such that these infinities that come when you calculate probabilities are such that they cancel each other. And there are some, and in some theories, you, they can never get cancelled. And all the theories in which they get cancelled each other are theories that have more symmetry. That means uh, they are somehow more, uh, more beautiful or more symmetric. Uh, which uh, which means that like supposing you had to arrange this room in a symmetric way, there would be uh, I mean like let's say a symmetric way, right? There would be very few ways to it to arrange, right? Most ways of arranging stuff in this room would break the symmetry. In which case I would have to throw out this table, all of this from the room, right? Yeah. Essentially, you have to put a bench which goes all around, right? Like that, right? In a symmetric way. So. So, so the moment we say that only in, in theories which seem to have deep symmetries, infinity is cancelled, it comes as a great simplification for, for physicists because it removes all possible ways which are not symmetric as being like non-starters. Mm -hmm. And it only removes, the, the, you have very limited choices then uh, of what, uh, you know, of what, uh, what theories, uh, what, what theories you can have. So, yeah, so, so now these, uh, so, so, so basically, so you have this, everybody is upset, <laughs> right, scientists are upset that you have infinities coming in your calculations in physics because most mathematicians will not agree that what physicists do when they cancel these infinities uh, is, uh, is something which is uh, very pure. No, of course, the fact that it works means maybe there is an underlying thing which we don't understand which yeah. is making it work. Yeah. But a lot of people feel, feel that fundamentally a fundamental theory of science should not have this odd thing happening, like giving I random big numbers which are cancelling to give small numbers. I give my wife on board. You are <laughs> However, that problem becomes, uh, that problem give, becomes a saviour because it tells you that most theories are not going to work. And only theories which then just, it just shortens the number of theories too much. Only theories which are high symmetry. And even, even in those theories, the terms in the theory are also limited. Not all symmetric terms are allowed. Only terms which are like, uh, at the most quartic, like power four terms. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so typically in interactions, like for example, in this uh, thing, in this, uh, thing where you had a neutron a neutron going to a proton so our observation is a neutron goes to a proton emits an electron and a neutrino okay this is our observation right 
Now you could try many ways in which this can happen. Your first way can simply be, it's called a four Fermi interaction, like this. There is an interaction with which a neutron, so, so there is no exchange particle here, right? The way I've drawn the diagram. I'm saying my theory is such that the neutron, it has a term in the fourth term that will make a neutron go into a proton, emit an electron, and an antineutrino. Okay? Which is what I observed. But if you look at this theory, this theory will not have the symmetry. And therefore, this theory will lead to infinities that, uh, that do not cancel. And therefore, this theory would not be permitted. Then if you start searching what are the theories for weak interactions that are possible, you are left with essentially only one theory, which is uh, a theory which essentially says, so now actually protons and neutrons are made of quarks. Yeah. So when I say proton, you think of it as an up quark, and when I say uh, neutron, you think of it as a down quark. So it's a theory which says that down can be converted to up with the emission of a W particle. Right? Only that theory uh, will actually have you finite answers. Every other theory that you that people have tried uh, will give infinite answers. And now there is a proof. I think people like Tivo, some very good scientific mathematics and, and physicists, have proved that only theories with, uh, which have this local gauge symmetry, it's called, uh, are renormalizable. Renormalizable means are such that the infinities cancel. You still don't, you still can't do physics without getting infinities. So, so the best we have been able to do is to cancel the infinities that we get, right? And and the, and that has actually come up with the idea that there are only some theories possible. So almost the theory of weak interactions just becomes uniquely defined. The theory of electromagnetism becomes uniquely defined. The moment you know that electromagnetism is of the type that one photon is being emitted. Like this is the basic interaction, then uh, and all possible graphs you can draw from this interaction are permitted basically, right? Like this is absorbed, this is whatever, whatever, all possible graphs you can get which have one solid line and one wavy line, right? right? Is electromagnetic. Right. Uh, and there's only one way of doing it, it's uniquely determined uh, if, the the if the infinities have to cancel. So that is the, and that's the nice thing. Now, so is it just one okay, question? Sure. So can this theory explain uh, either at a deep level why you have antennas emitting electromagnetic waves and why only particular shapes work for antennas and not all shapes? I think that you might even explain from classical electromagnetism without needing to go into quantum theory. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this kind of thing, it probably has to do with the resonance or something like that, right? Of the wavelength of the antenna right. versus of the, of the frequency. Uh, but this thing can, for example, the electromagnetism, you don't even need W particles to explain. Yeah. Just this thing of photon and electron, pretty much it's called quantum electrodynamics QED. Yeah. Like Feynman was one of the people who invented this, so that's why these are called Feynman diagrams. It essentially tells you everything uh, about quantum electrodynamics. Now the classical limit is what you people as engineers would probably learn yeah. in electromagnetic theory, in Jackson and all that, there is a field. Uh, but that field is not, in quantum mechanics that field becomes quantized. And you can do the calculations much more accurately mm -hmm. uh, in, in quantum mechanics, right? And then you have all these phenomena like tunneling and all that you cannot, you, you don't have the classical analogs of those. So those things actually really happen. Now, yeah, um, I always thought that Coming to that R square term that we talked about, right? Yeah. I always thought that the R square term came because of the the area of a sphere thing where the, the surface density of anything declines at R square, uh, R square uh, inverse R square right. uh, type, right? I mean that uh, what do you call? Yeah. Uh, proportion. That proportion as the sphere grows larger and larger. Yeah. I always thought that the R square term came from there. Isn't it true? I mean. I, See, I mean, uh, see, I don't exactly know. Remember uh, uh, the thing that you are saying. So four bar square is the square, is the area of a sphere. Right, right. So I thought as the whenever a wave propagates in all directions or anything, 